Welcome to Hardcore Garage. Like I mentioned a couple videos ago, we're wrapping up all the old videos, so we need to get back on this mudroom and get it finished, and you guys need to see it happen. So, uh, stay tuned. A couple more rows are up. I'm gonna try to knock this out. I got 20 more pieces of this stuff waiting for them guys to get it in at Lowe's is a pain. Uh, and it's not always the best stuff out there, so you gotta dig. But here's where we're at. Moving right along, it goes pretty fast once you get to the point where you're not having to cut around things. And now we're basically using a full piece to do two rows on the left and one full piece here cut down to 78 inches. I bought eight footers, I could get them in 12, but the price difference when I added it up, it just wasn't enough. Uh, well, it was actually, it cost more is what I'm trying to say to use a 12 footer. I would have been able to stagger my steams a little bit differently, but I don't think it looks bad at all when you look at the stagger, so I'm totally satisfied with it. Can't do this one-handed. <laughs> got this side done. I got a little off in the corner. And man, I think some of these pieces just ain't the same because I was tight as ever all the way through there. Unless I was just off on that first one and that's possible too. But there's gonna be some trim right there in the corner so I don't even think you're really even gonna know it. Still pretty pleased with it. Got to add some spacers for my trim around the doors. I'm gonna finish this section out right here, hopefully in the next couple of minutes. A little bit further. Probably gonna run out of wood like always. Looks like I maybe need two more pieces. Wouldn't you know. <laughs> Looks good though. Well, looks like I'll be going back to Lowe's again to get a couple more pieces. I still got to do under the stairs too, so really, I knew I was going to run out. I just guessed 20 pieces and thought I'd be right. Nope. Well, looky there. I just dropped the last piece in on all the main stuff anyway. Yeah, I'm filming the wrong direction. I got to finish. That area back in there still. <clears throat> I should be able to knock that out today. Everything still needs caulked around the stairs and stuff like that. And I'll have to uh, build a little spacer around that door to be able to get my trim to lay flat. But it's coming together, guys. Finally. stop set where I want. I like to trim off the factory edges. They usually suck anyway. This, these stops make it a whole lot easier. You can just jam your wood in there. Make your cut. Set your piece off to the side. Slide the next one over. Square it up. Very little waste this way also. I just shaved just a tad bit. I don't know if it is any more, but this chop saw was one of my most expensive tools that I had when I first started 
uh, doing home renovations and crap like that. Which is what I was into before I went strictly garage doors. factory edges of this wood is hardly ever nice and square so it is very important to cut that first little sliver off. But I kind of learned pretty much everything that I know from practicing on my own house. I'm a professional garage door guy, but I would never claim to be a professional builder. Just is what it is, guys. About to run out of nails. So I grab me some extra nails. But when you do have a section where you can just kind of roll with it, man, it is nice. here when it runs out of nails too. It's a good thing. I love this DeWalt nailer. I'm sure other people have their favorite tools. That thing right there saved me so much work. Not having to walk in and out of people's houses. Dragging an air compressor and lines. So you got some kind of rotary in it. I like it. I know this stuff here ain't exactly garage door work, guys. Or garage work in general. But it is prettying things up. And I don't know about you guys, but I like my garage to look good. Even when it's dirty. Sure. It's going super smooth. Something's got to go wrong here for too long. <laughs> Those nails probably aren't hitting much there. Now, I'm not going to nail that last one in until I get this one cut. Makes it a little bit easier. But yeah, so I'm going to take me some measurements here, kind of get an average. Uh, my floor, when they poured the floors, or maybe I poured the floors, who knows? It was so long ago, 1996, 97, somewhere around there. Uh, the floor isn't that level. I think there is a slope to my floor, maybe more than one slope, different directions. Uh, but that is what's nice is with this joint here, you know, I can kind of have a little bit of adjustment here and another little bit of adjustment here. It looks like this side here is going to be higher than this side and it could be an optical illusion from where I'm sitting, but that's what it looks like to me and I'll be able to fix that. So we'll see here in a second. All right, we got it in there, guys. You see the little bit of the difference there in the uh, last piece. I could have notched it and done a lot of different stuff, but I think I'm probably... Probably gonna put baseboards back in there anyway. So uh, that's great. Uh, I gotta make some little spacer pieces there to hold out the trim. And other than that, guys, just trim out this door, put my alarm panel back on, figure out some kind of neat trim for that corner. And uh, there's other stuff that we're gonna do. I'm gonna put some of that wood right there and on the wall right here going up the stairs. But this has to has to uh, at least get a little check off on your list there. Got a little bit of variation there, I think. Maybe, well, in that last 
group I made, but it don't matter. This stuff is just beautiful. All the knots, all the streaking in the collar. Really, really dig it. I would highly suggest using this material on the inside of your home. It smells amazing. All right, I've got all of my uh, spacers made. I used some one by twos and I stuck them in here and scribed the back side to make sure everything was level all the way around. And then I glue them in and throw some nails in there. And then my trim will sit right here and cover this gap here. <clears throat> we'll show you that next. Last piece going in. Final touch here. Oh, what did I do with those screws right here? Okay, gotta do those first, right? All of this cedar came from Lowe's. The six inch pieces of wood were $24. I believe. This is a motion light because when we build our house, we forgot to put a stupid light switch at the top and bottom of the stairs. We also forgot to put a doorbell, but luckily they make wireless doorbells. So our solution to only having a, well, we had a light switch down here, so you get up to the top of the stairs, you'd be like, oh, I gotta get back down there to turn off the lights. So our solution was a uh, motion sensor and it works pretty good. It again, screws the same way. That's it guys, finally got it all done. I'll give you a wide angle here in a second, but we did it. Let's do this final walkthrough. I know I said that I probably wasn't going to finish today, but I lied. I went ahead and got it done. I was too close. I took a break and then I came back and I whooped it out. Everything is done. It looks really, really good. Yes. Completely trimmed out around the door. Turned out really nice. I don't know if I'm gonna put baseboards or not. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with it, guys. So there you have it. A project completed. Check, done, pull, put a fork in me. Oh. <laughs> but the whole reason behind all this, if you've been following along, is so we can get back in there. 
I can't even show you no more of that yet. You're just going to have to wait and see. Keep on trucking.